Hello guys, my name is SVB and I'm back with another video and today I'm going to be continuing my What I Learned as a GM series and this is going to be What I Learned as a GM in Plat Part 1. Now if you're new to this series, I highly recommend you go back and watch my previous two videos, What I Learned as a GM in Gold and that video explains all the context of why I'm in Platinum or previously Gold and all the things that lay the building block for what I'm going to talk about on this video. And once again guys, I'm going to split this video up to two parts. And in this part, I'm mainly going to focus on mentality. As things stand, for those of you who are wondering, I'm about 50 SR away from Diamond at the moment, so hovering around the 2900s. And one of the things that I realized is that mainly, it isn't always technical ability or even in-game things that are holding people back in a rank like Platinum. What I've realized is that for a lot of players in Platinum, there's a fundamental issue with the mentality of how they approach the game and how they approach their games and learning from Overwatch. And that's actually what's holding a lot of people back in this rank. Because there are some technically very skillful players and some people who put a lot of hours in Overwatch and spend a lot of time involving themselves in Overwatch and yet they can't seem to climb. So in this part of the video, I'm going to talk about those mentalities and more importantly why they exist and how I think we can correct them. And in the second part of the video, I'm going to talk a little bit more about some specific things that I've learned in the rank. So there's the running order guys. Let's get to it. So before I really get into the meat of this video guys, I want to put out a little bit of a disclaimer, which is that this video may seem harsh to a lot of people. Now I think, or I'd like to think, in my previous video, GM in Gold, I was largely nice and I, and I don't have a negative view of players in Gold. I don't have a negative view of players in any rank because we're all just people and we're all just trying to learn and we can't all be good at everything. But what I say about Platinum may sound like I'm being really harsh or like I'm being bitter or toxic or mean. But honestly, believe me guys, what I'm about to tell you is out of love. And I know that's a cliche, but I genuinely do want to help fix these issues that a lot of people I saw in Platinum are having. And when I say the opening sentence of what I'm about to say, I think you'll understand what I mean. Now I've played in every rank of Overwatch from Gold all the way to Top 500. And I can tell you guys that Platinum is the most toxic rank in Overwatch. It's it's something that people say and maybe a lot of you watching this will say, duh, uh, you know, this is what we've been saying for the entire time, but it really is true. And not because toxicity is somehow exclusive to Platinum, because let me tell you guys, there are some toxic games at all ranks, even at GM and Top 500. You will have games where people just throw for absolutely no reason for the for the most minor provocations. But I think what's frustrating about Platinum is one the frequency with which people tilt and honestly it is it is I think every other game when things went wrong people just started turning on each other so quickly and for, for no reason you know games where one only one round has gone down and maybe you get steamrolled on a 2 CP map and already people start tilting people start saying it's hopeless there's no way we're gonna win I'm, I'm just I'm just gonna sit and spawn I'm just gonna pick Torb and hide in the corner and so the frequency of this blaming each other was a little bit alarming. But even worse than that, I think, was the reasons for the toxicity. And I have to say that the things that people were getting mad about were some of the most ill-informed opinions on Overwatch that I've heard in a while. And mainly, it revolved around the people who got mad. And again, I don't want to give the impression that everybody in Platinum is doing this. Because usually it's the toxic and tilting people who are the loudest, and therefore they give the impression that everybody is like them. But in reality, I know that there's a lot of you who are in Platinum who are just as helpless as anybody else. But most often what people were saying was essentially something along the lines of Oh, I can't carry this team any harder. I'm essentially 1v6ing. You all are trash. You all suck. You are costing me this game. And let me tell you guys, oh boy were they wrong. If I, if I had to sum up gold in one word, I would say that gold is a rank of mistrust. And again, this is what I talked about in the previous video where People didn't trust their teammates to do the right things and therefore it ended up in this weird circle where every role was doing their own thing and doing the wrong things because they didn't think that their teammates would help them at the end of the day. If I had to sum up Platinum in one word, it would be delusion because there were so so many players that I encountered who essentially thought that they deserved to be Master Diamond or GM but somehow the game was conspiring to hold them back or their teammates were conspiring to hold them back. And there was no sense of self-reflection, no hint of an idea that maybe they also made mistakes in the game and maybe they were also deserving to lose for their own actions and not for everybody else's. Now again, this is not to paint every Platinum player with this brush because obviously Platinum is the most common rank in Overwatch and so obviously Platinum encompasses a large spread of players. There's players in Platinum 
who honestly do have excellent technical ability, who some of them who have excellent aim, some have excellent game sense, and if they really improved on either of those things, they could quite easily climb. But that's where I think a lot of people in Platinum could really use a bit of a wake-up call and really look at themselves objectively. And to help do that, I want to just try and logically debunk some of the ideas that I've seen going around in Platinum and some of the attitudes that I've seen people approach their games with. And I'm sure it's not going to convince everybody. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people who are still really mad at me and will say that they just don't know what it's like to play in the games that they get played in. But if you're watching this video and you're open to maybe looking at yourself analytically, then keep watching because I'm going to try and talk through some things. And there's a couple of what I'd call hard truths that I think people need to understand a Platinum. I'm just going to try and spell them out. Now the first truth is really quite simple. And essentially what people need to understand is that there's only two reasons you're stuck in a rank, guys. Either you don't play enough or you deserve to be at that rank. And some of you might say that's an oversimplification, but really guys, that, that is all it is. It really is that simple. Now the first reason is, f is fairly innocuous and straightforward. I've just got some illustrations here to explain that. You guys know I'm not very good with the math stuff, so this is all very simple. But let's say you have a 70% win rate with your main hero. Now if you play 10 games with a 70% win rate, that means on, on a net you have a positive 4. 7 games won, 3 games lost. Now assuming you get 25 for your 4 wins, you're going to get 100 SR gained. Now clearly I don't have to spell out to you guys, that's not enough to climb a rank. But there are a lot of people who only just play their placements or their placements and then 4, 5, 6 games after that and that's it. But you're never going to climb like that guys because even with a 70% win rate which is really really high if a 70% win rate is extremely high and that means you're really good at that hero you're only going to get 100 SR which is a fifth of what you need you need to play five times you need to play 50 games at that win rate to climb all the way from one rank to the next of course even if you're halfway through your rank you'll still need to play 25 games with a 75% win rate to actually climb into the next rank but you may not have a 70% win rate, you may have a 55% win rate, even that is good. But that's where ladder becomes a bit of a, a grind, guys. You have to grind out enough games for your ability to guide you through over a long period of time. Because, again, simple mathematics, 10 games is a very small sample size. 10 games are easily liable for, I don't know, 2 or 3 games to just go badly for things completely beyond your control. A thrower or a team who just tilts or somebody leaving in your game. These are things that can happen over the course of 10 games that can significantly throw off your win percentages. But the more you play, the more likely it is that those things will normalize. For every game that you had a thrower, the enemy team will have a thrower and it'll balance out. So it's only really when you're playing that 100 games a season or 50 games a season that you're really going to see the significant changes of your SR provided you are actually winning and playing well with the hero that you play with. So if this applies to you, you just need to play more and then you'll climb out of your rank. However, this obviously doesn't apply to everybody. And for those who doesn't, the bitter pill to swallow is you probably deserve to be at the rank you're at. And this is tough for people to take because everybody fundamentally thinks that they are better than where they are. And that's not to shame or blame anybody for it because I've been the same. I peaked in the GM in season 5 or 6. I got about 100 SR in the GM. But then I fell out and I spent the next 5 or 6 seasons outside of GM. And yet internally I kept telling myself I'm a GM level player. I'm a GM level player. Even though evidence would suggest that I, having spent 5 or 6 seasons in Masters I was a master level player, but because I had internalized this idea that I was secretly GM and I deserved to be GM because I had once been GM, I was holding myself back because I kept telling myself that I was doing the right things and that eventually I'll end up back in GM where I belong. But in reality there were mistakes that I needed to iron out before I actually went back to where I thought I belonged. And so to everybody, this, this is my advice to you that stop lying to yourself essentially. Stop making excuses for yourself because if you're consistently at a rank, it's because you deserve to be there. And I can't tell you the number of comments that I received on my video and in Reddit and places like that where people kept telling me that they appreciated the advice I was giving in theory but somehow it was their teammates holding them back and it was impossible for them to do the right things that I said they should do when their teammates just never helped them at all. Now to the people saying that it's the teammates that hold them back, that they can't do the right things because their teammates are absolute idiots and absolute bots. The second hard truth is that's just not possible. That's just not happening. Because let's assume that you are the person who's doing the right things most of the time or 90% of the time and you're doing the correct things that you should be doing but your teammates aren't helping, your teammates aren't following you in because everybody at your rank is essentially an idiot and they don't understand how the game should be played. Now the logic behind that theory is that everybody, for example, at Platinum is an idiot. But what that theory ignores 
is that let's say you have five idiot teammates. Well, the enemy team therefore is going to get put with six idiots. So your presence as one player matched with 11 idiots should clearly be enough to make enough of a difference over the course of multiple games that you should be winning more games than you're losing. It's really that simple guys. To the people who keep telling me that they get matched with bad teammates all the time. I'm not having a go at you guys because I understand how difficult it is to be honest with yourself. But if your teammates are bad, so are the enemy teammates. They're facing the exact same players that you are. They're dealing with the same teammates that you are. They're dealing with the same issues that you are. If people aren't communicating in your team, there's no reason to believe that they're communicating in the other team. And even if in one specific game, you happen to be matched with a bunch of idiots and a bunch of throwers. Over the course of many games and over the course of a season, that's going to balance out because there are going to be plenty of games where you win because somebody on the enemy team is throwing or the enemy team is tilting or your team is communicating nicely and the enemy team are just scattered and doing everything on their own. So the idea that it's always your teammates who are bots and the enemy team is always organized and your comp is always dumb and their comp is always good, it doesn't hold up under scrutiny guys. It doesn't follow basic logic because if you were better than your rank and if you were better than your teammates, your play as one of six contributors to the team would have enough of a statistical impact to weigh the outcome of a game. And despite what people might say, Overwatch is very well balanced that way and that even one player not contributing or one player contributing way more than their opposite counterpart can really make a difference and can really swing the game. So really guys, you have to let go of this idea that your teammates are holding you back. One, because it doesn't hold up under logic. But two, and more importantly, this is the really key point guys, you can't control what your team is going to do. The only thing you can control is yourself. And at some point, you have to come to the realization guys, that the only common denominator in your games is you. There's only one thing you can guarantee is going to be in all your games, and that's you. So if you don't look at your own play first and foremost, you are never going to climb. Because you're not changing that one thing that you can guarantee is going to be part of your next game and the next game and the game after that. So again guys, that's why you have to try and be a little bit detached about your own play. If you were watching someone else play the game that you played and you didn't have the emotional investment of this is my gameplay, therefore I have to think that I'm really good. If you were just watching your own video like it was someone else's, would you honestly tell that person that they've made no mistakes in the game and that they're doing everything right? Or would you find fault? Would you find even little things, but sometimes also big things that they're doing wrong? The positioning error there, the, decision, the poor decision making over here, the suboptimal choice of here or there, the lack of communication here. You have to detach yourself from the game you just played. You have to sit back and think, okay, what could I have done differently in that game? Every time I died, could I have done something differently? Could I have avoided dying? Could I have been in a better position to not die? That fight we lost, could I have done something to affect that fight? If I had hit that shot that I missed, would I have swung the fight? If I had landed that shatter, if I had transcended a couple seconds earlier, if I'd hit two shots and built my ult, two seconds earlier. Would that have made a difference? Would that have swung the fight? These are things that you have to really honestly and coldly look at sometimes. And I think the reason people struggle is because they attach their egos to their rank. And that's where so many people in Platinum, I don't think it's that they don't care about the game. It's, it's the complete opposite. They care too much about the game because they place their self-worth in what their SR rank is. And again, I understand this mentality, guys. Believe me, I, I've been there. I, I was there too. I was in Platinum at a point in time. And all I wanted was to be in Diamond and I thought that would fulfill me. Then I got to Diamond and all I wanted to do was get to Master and I thought that would fulfill me. And then I got to Master, I wanted to be GM. And when I got to GM, I wanted to be Top 500. But at a certain point in time, guys, you have to stop chasing that. You have to stop chasing that symbol and just start chasing being a better player. Being a better player than you were in the game before. Because if you value your play, and as a consequence yourself, based on your SR, you're going to hold yourself at the mercy of those SR fluctuations that literally everybody goes through. When you drop 100 SR, you're then essentially forced to confront the idea that are you 100 SR worth a player? And the answer that most people come up with is no, I'm not, it's just my teammates are bad. In reality, whether you lose 100 SR or you gain 100 SR, it doesn't matter. What matters is are you a better player, are you a better teammate, and are you removing mistakes from your game? Are you playing ladder just to go in and win and climb SR? Or are you playing to be a better player? Are you playing because you think you're GM and you just want the vindication of having that emblem by your name? Or are you playing because you recognize that you're not at a GM level and you want to improve and get to GM? These are really important distinctions guys because the people who play like they already deserve a, a higher rank 
will, will really struggle to get a higher rank because they're never able to look at the mistakes they're making in the rank they're currently in. They're constantly assessing themselves based off an image that they've deluded themselves over, based off a version of themselves that's one, two, three, four ranks higher than where they actually are. And the only way they can make those two things meet is by convincing themselves that it's the teammates holding them back and not themselves. So to just cut the long story short, to move to the TLDR, you have to stop making excuses for yourself, guys. You have to be honest with yourself. Because if you really care about the game, if you really like the game, if you really want to be better at the game, then you have to entertain the idea that what you're doing is wrong. As I talked about in the previous video, you have to be willing to unlearn things. But even more than that, you have to be willing to entertain the idea that maybe what you're doing is fundamentally wrong. You have fundamental mistakes in your game, not just basic mistakes. Maybe a complete approach that you've been taking for the last season, two seasons, three seasons, might be wrong. That you're actually playing your hero in a way that isn't the best way to play that hero. And maybe that's not the case, right? Maybe it is that you're just making minor mistakes, that once you improve on them, you'll improve and you'll climb. But you'll never figure that out unless you're willing to look at every aspect of your game with the idea that maybe it's wrong. Secondly, you need to remove the idea that it's your teammates costing you the game. Not just because you're the only player in every game that you play, but also because you can't do anything about your teammates. You can calm and you can try and organize them, but at the end of the day, if they don't listen, if they don't cooperate, there's nothing you can do, nor can you control the teammates you're gonna get. Now, the caveat to that is that you can use the group finder, and that's another thing that I would really recommend to the people who are frustrated with the teammates that they keep getting. If you really do think that it's your teammates holding you back, there is an excellent group finding system that is available to anybody who isn't in, ma in the master area where there's just not enough players to make it work. But if you're in platinum, gold, and even diamond, there are plenty of players you can recruit who you can play the strategies you want to play with, who will coordinate with you. But either way, you're the person you've got to improve. You're, you can't be out there improving them, you're out there to improve yourself. And sometimes your team will cost you the game, but sometimes they'll win you the game too. And the number one, number number one toxic attitude that people have is essentially summarized with the attitude that every game they lose is because of their team, and every game they win is in spite of their team. I.e., if they win a game, it's because they carried and they, they played amazingly. Not that maybe they played decently but their teammates also played excellently or maybe they actually played not so great and they made a lot of mistakes but they still won because their teammates played well. If you play with that attitude, there's really no hope for you. People often ask me what mistakes are their players make at a lower rank or what's one area of their game they should be improving and that's really the number one mistake I think guys. Because when someone comments or messages me telling me that it's their teammates that are always costing them SR and they don't know how to fix their teammates, I know that this player is really going to struggle to climb because they just aren't willing to look at themselves. So please, please, please ditch that attitude, guys. And I promise you some self-reflection and some self-analysis will take you a long, long way in getting better at Overwatch. So that's all I got for today, guys. I know this video is very theoretical and vague and a little bit ranty, but I just wanted to explain certain mentalities that I noticed in Platinum. And more often than not, I think it was the mentality to the game that was holding people back more than specific mistakes that everybody was making. So hopefully, some people were able to resonate with some of the things I was saying. Either way, I hope this helped. I'll be back with a part two where I'll talk about some more specific things that I've learned. So if you found this video vague, hopefully that one will be a little bit clearer for you. And again, I'd just like to thank my patrons on Patreon, who are really, really amazing, and are the reason I can keep making these videos. And I'm super thankful for all of you who watch and subscribe and leave comments, even the negative ones, because they give me a good idea of what people are thinking and what certain attitudes are in the Overwatch community. But really, you guys have been overwhelmingly positive and I'm super thankful. So I'll be back soon with another video. Please do keep like, sharing and subscribing. And I'll see you guys soon.